we're on a little training. We would go out on, before we went on Westpac, we'd pull out of San Diego and do a little training. Uh, maybe carry, what we call carrier qualls. That's where pilots had to call right. them with their carrier landing. Yeah. San Diego at night. Uh, and uh, we were recovering aircraft. By that time, I was a, I was a, a plane captain for, an, for the S-2. Okay. Uh, I just checked into the squadron. So I, when, before you go to a shop, they'll let you work on the, uh, on the flight line for a while to get familiar with the aircraft and, and do those duties. And then the certain people who are selected as plane captains. You're in charge of the airplane. Make sure it, it, each airplane is, is, is maintained properly, fuel, the oil, everything. So I was a yeah. plane captain. We're recovering aircraft at night. But your flight deck at night is a pretty hazardous place because you can't see. There's no white light. Everything's red light. So yeah. there's no pilots. And uh, we just recovered another squadron had just recovered a plane. I was in that same area. And it's right next to me. And the and the, the plane captain for that that airplane he had tied when a plane when a, when a when an aircraft would land, a propeller aircraft, before they would shut down their engines we had to chain the plane down so they chained down he had chained down one side of the airplane and was walking around he's walking a few feet from me he came around the other side and he just didn't know he wasn't you got to be very careful he walked into the prop oh no uh, uh, that was that was probably the, the worst thing that happened as far as what i saw other than seeing a lot of bodies in, in Da Nang, because we weren't very far from the mortuary uh, that where they would bring the bodies in from the field. That was pretty bad, seeing this guy walk into the prop. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you saw that. Yeah. Didn't actually see it. I saw it a few seconds afterward when his body fell over. So, uh, so I'm assuming it was, I mean, so he was, he was killed instantly. I would have thought, I don't know what happened to him after that. They hauled him off. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. We lost a few over there. We lost 12 on the Ranger. From accidents and we lost 12 people on the Ranger. We lost, uh, one guy fell overboard and drowned. One guy got killed on the flight deck and we lost, four pilots and one enlisted crew got killed and then five pilots were missing. So, so we had a total of 12 on the range. Shot down. Shot down. I don't know what happened to the missing, if they made it or, or not. So we lost, so, we lost 12. Didn't lose any on the Ticon Road on the West Bay, but we lost 12 on the range. So you mentioned just a minute ago, um, working near the, the mortuary in, in Da Nang. Yeah, we weren't that far from the mortuary, and we'd have to go. Uh, there was a, and this I know this is going to sound terrible, but there was a boot shortage of all things at that time. You couldn't get any boots, and so at the mortuary, when guys would come in from that were killed, they would take their boots unless they were met something wrong with them or covered with with blood or whatever. They would take their boots, tie them together, and throw them in a pile. And that's where you got your new boots, was out of that pile. And so I can remember going over the, the mortuary and looking at those boots. I was gonna, and then I thought, no, I can't do this. I made do with what I had. And uh, they, were, they would bring, that's where, there were, there were two mortuaries in, in Vietnam, one at Tonsonu at Saigon, one at Denae, Army mortuaries. Army took care of all that. And that's where they would bring the, the bodies in the field would go to staging areas and then they would group them together and then bring them into the mortuary. So they would come in from the field, uh, bodies uh, from the field, and they were all bloated and they were wrapped up, but they were all bloated like, uh, like an animal you'd see alongside the road. So that was, that was, uh, it was a bad experience. I used to see those all the time. Yeah. So you never heard that story like that about the boots? Well, I mean, you 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 hear that kind of thing a lot. You know, you have a guy, maybe you have a, a KIA, you have a, a firefight, and a guy is killed, and um, 
and the other guys in the squad need stuff, and so they, you know, they they take what they need, and it's, you know, it's I guess it's a that's one of the rough parts of war, right? You know, um, we were talking uh, um, a, a while back, and you know, and the question, you know, when did you, you know you're going to a war zone, but then something happens, and then you really realize, oh yeah, I'm in a war zone. And so you talked about being in Da Nang before you flew to the Ranger, and that outgoing artillery, and then okay, yeah, I'm in a war zone. When you see this mortuary and you see what's going on there, does does that does that become even more real? No, I mean, it, does that does does that make sense? And I still get I get this. There's a certain feeling I would get over there that, that once again, you don't really, I never really thought about the Vietnam that much until I got over there. And there's just bizarreness to the place. And I still, on occasion, will get that feeling. Something will trigger that. And there, there's just an eeriness, there was just an eeriness about it. And you would, because you suddenly realize that, you know, these people are trying to kill you. And, uh, and and I still uh, I can't, uh, fun, I'll get that feeling. I'll have a certain smell or a certain I'll see a certain thing, and and you feel like you're back over there, and in, in all of its weirdness. So yeah, you think uh, 